Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's get down to nuts and bolts. In other words, let's get down to the nitty gritty about how to calculate that correlation coefficient. And yes, the equation looks a little scary, but it's not so bad once you start breaking it down. We're taking the same data set as before, 10 students doing 10 push ups uh, each doing a set of push-ups, each doing a set of sit-ups, and we're going to find the correlation between sit-ups and push-ups. Notice we made one little change right here. We changed the 42 to 39, so the numbers would come out just a little bit nicer. So how do we interpret this equation? In the numerator, we have a summation from i equals 1 to n. Well, n represents the number of data points. There's 10 students, each with a set of data, push-ups and sit-ups. We then take the difference between each one of the data points, and let's call the push-ups x and the sit-ups y. That makes it easier for the calculation. So we take each of the data points for x and subtract from that the average or the mean. We multiply that times each of the y data points, subtract the mean of those as well. And then we multiply those out and sum up those 10 multiplications that becomes the numerator. In the denominator, it's the number of data points times the standard deviation of the x values times the standard deviation of the y values. Now, the standard deviation, in case you forgot, can be calculated by taking the sum of the difference between each of the values minus the average quantity squared. When you sum all those up, you divide by the number of data points, take the square root, and that's the standard deviation. If you then look at this times this times this, you can actually say that the denominator can be simplified to simply being the square root of the two sums multiplied together. The sum of the x values minus the average of the x values squared and the sum of the y minus the y values, the average of y values quantity squared. Of course, I should put up a sub i there as well. And then you multiply those together, take the square root, and that becomes a denominator. So there's nothing like an actual example to show you how to do that. What are some of the things we need to calculate? Well, first of all, we need the sum of all the x values and the sum of all the y values. So when we sum up all the x values, sum up all the y values, we get 350 and 380. Then to find the average, we take the sum and divide by the number of data points, which is 10. So 350 divided by 10 is 35. 380 divided by 10 is 38. That gives us the average value for X and Y, the push-ups and the sit-ups. Next, what we need to do is we need to take the difference between each of the X values and the average, the average being 35. So 27 minus 35 is a minus 8. 22 minus 35 is a minus 13. 15 minus 35 is a minus 20 and so forth. We do that for all the X values and we do the same for all the Y values. So the average is 38. So 30 minus 38 is minus 8, 26 minus 38 is minus 12, and so forth. That gives us all the differences between the y values and the average. Then we need to multiply them together. So when we do that, we multiply these together, we get 64, multiply those together, we get 156. Notice we keep track of the positive and negative signs, but in this case, they all end up being positive. And then we need to take the sum of that. So we sum all the products together. When we do that, we sum up all these different products and we get 1,388. And that goes up in here. So we can go ahead and put that down already. So the R value, the coefficient, is equal to 1,388, which is the, uh, let's see, that is the, oh, sorry. I got ahead of myself. Not 1388, I'm looking for this value. It's the sum, it's the sum of the product, which is 914. So it's equal to 914 in the numerator. What about the denominator? Well, what we need to do there is take the difference between them and square them and then sum them up. So let's see here, the difference between them and then square them so that would be this number squared is 64. So that's the difference between them that we have to square that. So we have minus 8 squared is 64, minus 13 squared is 169, minus 20 squared is 400. So that's all these numbers. It's the difference between each individual x minus the average quantity squared. And then we need to sum them all up. And we get 1,388. We do the same for the y values. So here, notice 
we take the difference between y and the average y, that was minus 8. If we square it, we get 64. 12 squared is 144, 13 squared is 169, and so forth. If we sum them all up, we get 858. So now, we need to multiply those two numbers together and take the square root. So we take the square root of this quantity squared, which is right here, which is 388. Multiply times the sum of these numbers squared, which is 858. And let's see, that will give us the correlation factor. So let's calculate it. So we got 1388 times 858 in the denominator. Take the square root of that, bring that to the numerator, and multiply that times 914. I get 0 0.83754. 0 0.83754. Or we can simply say this is equal to 0 0.84. So R is equal to 0 0.84, which is the linear correlation factor between push-ups and sit-ups. Now, how do we interpret 0.84? Well, it's a fairly moderate to strong correlation. It's not a very strong correlation because that would be up in the 90s, but 0 0.84 is a fairly strong correlation, which would indicate that individuals, students, who are fairly good at doing push-ups, they're also fairly good at doing sit-ups because they're probably in better shape than those people who do not do very many sit-ups, uh, push-ups, therefore they probably don't do very many sit-ups. So there does seem to be a fairly moderate to strong correlation, not a very strong correlation because that means that probably there's some individuals that do a lot of push-ups, not a lot of sit-ups, or individuals that do a lot of sit-ups, but not a lot of push-ups. But in general, there does seem to be a relatively strong correlation between the two. So again, notice the equation can be simplified to make it look like this. In other words, you need to first sum up all the values for x and y. Then you need to take the average by dividing it by the number of data points. Then you need, need to take the difference between each of the data points and the average for both x and y. Then you need to multiply those together. Then you need to sum them up. So when you multiply them together, that is this times this, you sum them all up, you get 9 or 14, which is the sum of all these numbers right here. And that goes in the numerator. Now you do it again, except you want to square each of the values. So you take these two rows right here, but now you're going to square them and sum them all up. And that means that you're going to take those two numbers, multiply them together, take the square root in the denominator, and voila, out pops the linear correlation coefficient, and that is how it's done.